What kind of God he do that? I was taught, it was Khatim al Nabuwa. he was taught this is the seal of the prophethood. But have you ever seen the seal of the prophethood to see the, the, to, see the seal, the, to agree that this is the seal of prophethood? Have you, have you a picture of it? What is that? God will make a seal on the, in his body? Now what the seal says? Eat hummus? Hmm. Guys, we understand. There's people want to call me. I understand. But we cannot. I, I sent her already hi, but she did not answer what I would do. That's it. I mean, what did, and is, she, uh, is she a Muslim? All right. Here we go. We send you a hi. Hello? Yes. Do you hear me? I do hear you. Go ahead. Finally. I've been waiting so long for this moment, but okay. It's all right. Uh, well, I have, a, I have some questions. All right. Are you almost time for us? Yes, right. actually, yes. Um, but I'm struggling. Uh, I just want to know the truth. I have uh, some questions. All right. So there is in the Quran there is uh, the the science, and uh, they they tell about the iron mm. that they sent it from a bulb. Mm. So I don't know if you can explain me this, but I, I cannot find it anywhere on the internet. You only see about Muslims who are saying, uh, yes, uh, in the Quran, it's like yeah, from I, above. Yeah, I, I, I know yeah. that. I, I can find it for you, no problem. Let me give me a second. And we will show you how this is, uh, this is nothing but a big fat lie. Yes. Right. Give me a second, please. I will find you the reference. So you think this is truthful, or you, what do you think? Well, some things I think are truthful, but they, they say they never change the Quran, so mm. I don't know about that. All right. Okay, this is the Quran. So uh, what, what they say to you about the Quran, about the miracle of the Aaron? It's coming from above, right? Yes, yes. Right. And that now in the 20th century, they, uh, they found that it's true. And how could an Arab man from the 14th century all knew about this? No, actually the Quran, uh, if we go to the Quran and speak about Al-Hadid. Yes. And it says the following, chapter 57, verse number 25. It says, we send our messengers with the clear proofs and we send down with them book and the balance that the humanity may uphold justice. And we send down iron, which is violent force. So what the Quran is saying, we send with our messengers books, but did Allah really send a physical book? No. Anything, anything is given to us supposedly is sent down from Allah including rain, including angels, including books, even the messengers themselves. And then here, he says, and we send down the Aaron so they can kill people with it, because it says about violent force. If we go and read the interpretation for this verse, it says that this is a tool Allah he sends for mighty war, so human beings, they will kill each other. All right? Secondly, yes. secondly Aaron was not sent down from the space in earth. The earth magma is full of Aaron. What the science speak of, that the crust of the earth have a lot of iron which is coming from the space. Not the earth has zero iron, 
otherwise the, the magma itself is coming from the space so this is not true secondly the Quran says that Allah he created Adam in this in the sixth day so yes. this the science they are talking about about millions of years where some iron came from the space as meteor and fell down in the earth but the Quran says in the sixth day Allah created Adam and as you know Adam have a blood and our blood full of iron actually if we don't if we have deficiency in iron we will die immediately okay all right so it's a lie when they say that this is about the iron sent down secondly like i saw some of them they say uh, the number of the iron and they say uh, this chapter here is a chapter of al-hadid which is a chapter 57 and this is the yeah it's in the corner of his uh, the half okay yeah. there's iron yeah but hold on first of yeah. all first of all this is not uh, the half secondly in chapter 50, uh, chapter 57 uh, is not the true number of the quran uh, chapter because as you remember this is as Uthman he did so if we go and see if we look for the book of the Quran according to Revelation we will find the following let me show it to you Quran according to Revelation and then in this in, in here we will find If we go and we look for Al-Hadith. Do you see uh, Do you see my screen? No, I'm calling with my phone, but you can read it to me. It's All no right. problem. This is the Quran according to the revelation. What, what does that mean? You will notice here in the Quran that what is verse, what is chapter number one is Al-Alaq. But today in the Quran today is a chapter number 96. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now, if we go and search for fifty-seven, chapter number fifty-seven, we will find the following. Uh, give me a second. All right. Chapter fifty-seven is the chapter of Luqman. Do you see it? Oh, you yeah. See, you see, you so the real number of the chapter, which is number 57, is Luqman. So if the Quran today is better than the Quran which Allah He sent as order, that means the Quran, the one who made the Quran today, Uthman, is Allah, and Allah is not a good God. Because our Uthman, He come to number 57. So the one who made it 57 is Uthman, not Allah. Are you getting my point? Yeah, I'm getting it. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a false claim they come with. They are desperate. Now, number fifty-seven, the, the uh, Al Hadid, is supposedly number ninety-four. Okay. Which means the real number is ninety-four, not fifty-seven. So when they say this is a miracle, how it is fifty-seven? Well, this is mean the one who made the miracle is Uthman, not Allah. Yeah, it's uh, very you know stupid. I mean? They just so, make everything. Yeah, so it so, sounds uh, very good so, and everything is on its place. Yeah, so Allah is the one who said it is, he, he gave it to Muhammad as number 94, which means at the end of the Quran, almost at the end. So look at the difference. In the Quran today is 57. In the Quran of Muhammad is 94. That means the Quran of Muhammad is wrong. <laughs> Okay, that's and mean, there is also something you know, about in the, uh, in the best scenario. Me, that's mean yeah. Uthman is the prophet, not Muhammad, because how, how Uthman he knew. <laughs> yeah. What else? Give me one. Uh, give me uh, more, if you want. Uh, there's something about we made w water from all living living beings, like there's all water inside of them. Such so I don't know exactly what yeah. they say, but yeah. that is also uh, a miracle. So it's a kind yeah. of science so thing. Th now this is this is not only a stupid miracle because everybody knows everything around us live by water. I mean this is a this is not a knowledge. However, this is a bad miracle for the Muslims. Why? Because the Quran says, when when the Quran says we made it from uh, the water every living thing, he just contradicts himself because the Quran says that angels are made of light 
correct? Yes, but angel, angels are not, not living here, right? What about the genie? And the Quran yeah, says... I, I don't see them, man, so I don't know. No, the Quran... But maybe... No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not about all living things like we can see. No, 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 hold on. No? It says chapter number 21. This is the first Just number. everything, just do genies, genies and angels. No, do this believer see that the heavens and the earth were one mess and we tore them apart and we made from water every living thing every living thing and by the way genie you can see them because muhammad he said the snake is a genie a black a black dog is a genie is a shaitan so who said we don't see them there are we can see them according to muhammad muhammad he ordered his example to kill the black dogs why? Because he believed black is an evil color, and he be, he's racist. So he believed that the black dog is the devil. They ask him why we should kill the black dog. He says, because he is the devil. So when the Quran says we made every living thing from water, that is a stupid thing. Say, same time, well, isn't it the Quran state that the earth and the, and the sky are living things too? Aren't they living things and we see them? Yes. Okay, so how, are they made from water? Yeah, but that's different sky in the... No, it's not different. Muhammad, uh, Muhammad the rocks, he said, they said to him, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> rocks, you know. Muhammad, yeah. he says, Hada hajrun yuhibbuna wa yuhibbuhu. So, and uh, uh, even Muhammad, he says, the black stone is going to come in the judgment day with two eyes and a tongue and going to speak. And you said you speak Arabic, right? You are an Arab girl. No, no, no. I, uh, I'm Moroccan. But I don't speak Arabic. Oh, I'm speaking. born in the Netherlands, so oh. I, I'm uh, I'm talking Berbers, if you know that. All right, I don't speak Berber. I am. An yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, no problem. But anyway, this is here. Uh, first of all, this is a, 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 a any any kid can say everything around us, every living thing is made from water. This is not science, you know, generally speaking. But when we say when we make it science. That is a stupid statement because the Quran says that Allah He created the shaitan from fire and He created the angels from light. However, even angels, they can transform into men. Isn't the Muslim the sage Jibreel He came to Muhammad as a man? Yes. Okay, so was Jibreel made from water or from light? Not from light then. Hmm. How the light became a man, water? But what's, what I also don't understand, why you make a religion and if you know that one of thousand people will enter pi paradise, what's, mm -hmm. what's the point of making that kind of religion? No, this, is not the, are... this is not an issue for me because it's, uh, you know, about people deserve, people don't deserve, but this is not the issue. Uh, uh, but here you have a point, based on Islam, it, you know, it, 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 it exposes Islam and I will show you why. But before we go to answer you about that one, do you see here it says, do the disbelievers not see? Yes, don't I know you, that. Don't one. you think this is stupid? Yeah, it's because yeah, like they because they want who to saw argue. who saw this? None of us. How you say to us? Don't they see? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like your father and your mother. They say to you, "Don't you see our wedding party?" <laughs> but you were not there. Like at least today we have videotape maybe. But how you can witness for something, you never, you, you are not there. So when he speak about don't the disbeliever see how the earth and the heaven, they used to be one together and we separate them. But they did not see that. Nobody saw that. Secondly, no. the Quran here is teaching something false. That the earth and the heaven, they are, they used to be one and Allah separated them. But this is not true. We are inside the space. We are not outside. We are not even a small dust inside the space. And we are not separated. We are swimming in the space. The earth is simply like a spaceship provided with oxygen and its own needs to, to, uh, to function. As simple as that. Small, tiny spaceship, not even the size of a dust. So we are not separated apart. What the Quran is saying, that the earth and the heaven, they are now two objects. We are not. We are tiny. We're not even a dust. What else they told you about science? Give me something else. Uh, or about the pain reflectors in your in your skin, because when you go to hell, then your skin will be burned off and you'll get new ones again. 
and mm-hmm. they find out in science that it's true. I don't know the, exactly what they do. You know that one? Mm, okay. Well, you see here. I mean, isn't it everybody knows that when you put somebody in the fire, you do barbecue, you will get different color. <laughs> yeah, but they 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 were thinking that it's from the brains or something like that. I don't know. Uh, what the brain? This is from the brain. fire. What the brain? This is from the fire. You know, you it, what, the first thing we're born. Uh, yeah, I mean the pain. What, when you I don't know something uh, like so that. About I, the, pain I totally the, skin, the pain in the skin. The pain in the skin, right? The pain in the skin. Yes. Yeah, but you see, the pain in the skin doesn't mean that the rest of the body don't have pain. But the skin is the first thing to face wh- wh- whatever foreign object is. Actually. The skin have less. No, no, sorry. It's like this: uh, when the sk- skin is totally burned off, you don't feel anything anymore. So that's why you get a new skin, and we, you get the pain uh, who, again. Who said that? Who said if the skin burned off, you don't feel anything no more? Who said that? Ah, that, that's what they say. It's no, uh, this uh, science thing about this that. This is not true because we have ner- we have nerves. We have in, in every place in our. Do do you do you feel pain in your stomach? No, because no. but when your skin is totally just ruined. Okay, if your skin you don't feel anything anymore, right? No, you feel what, 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 because it's t- actually you will be burning more. You will be feeling more because now the pain. You see, your skin is your first defense system. If that yes. is gone, if that is gone, like if you if you now peel out your skin, then yes. the air will be har- harmful for you. Just the air will hurt you. So it's the opposite actually. There is the skin have have sensation, yes, but the under skin is even more sensitive. This is why if you have a cut, you will be hurt more. Why? Because now your skin is not protecting you. So if you are burned in the skin, does not mean you are not going to fail because still the burn will go down. Not only will stay in the skin. Have you ever heard of somebody? Have you ever heard of a, a chicken? You barbecue the chicken, only the skin is burned. No, he's burning them. The whole skin, the whole chicken is cooked. Okay. <laughs> Not only the skin. So, you know, this is that just this is a madness. And here, by the way, what kind of a pro, what kind of God do you want to do that? Like, you know, I want to change your skin and I will barbecue again. What about yeah? Those what, hell things are just horrifying. It just scares me about, what about hell and what about great punishments. Okay. Oh, it's so scary to just hear about that. You know, you are a lady, but I I don't want to be rude with you. Do you know that the Quran says that a person who disobey Allah, Allah will insert a chain in his anus? Yes, I know. I know. I, know. I heard about that. Yes, mm. but that's just horrifying. So, yeah, mm. I don't know what to say about what, that. What kind, of, what kind of God do you want to do? Sexual punishment. This is sexual torture. Why he want to insert? Yeah, something with the body parts you've been using. They will be punished. Yeah, but why the anus? Oh, the anus! I didn't hear about that. I, it was that's uh, kind of new for me. Yeah. So he, you know, he said that you have, you know, he. Uh, uh, let me get you the the, the uh, verse. And this uh, uh, this chain is very huge to the point each ring of it, as long as you spoke about the Aaron, each ring of it is equal. Uh, to the whole iron in the world, you know. All right, and by the way, here we have another miracle to talk about. Uh, My page is frozen. Let us see now. I will refresh my page. Give me a second. Okay. All right. Finally, I will show it to you in English as long as you don't speak Arabic. Um, we will go to Ibn Kathir. Hmm. 
And then we go here. All right. I want you to look with me in the screen, please. I will wait for you on the screen. And we will read together. This is Ibn Kathir. Let's zoom in. Allah in the judgment day, he will give you your book. Some people will be given their book in the right hand and some people will be given to them in the left hand. Okay, what happened? Okay. Then he said, then fasten him. Can you see the screen? No, I can't. I'm calling with my phone, but it's oh, okay. okay. I can hear right. you. So I'll then, just, uh, then fast and you can watch it later after we finish. Then yes. fasten him on chain. Wherefore the length is 70 cubits. Kabul Ahbar said, every ring of it will be equal to the entire amount of the Aaron found in this world. Continue. Then he says, yes. then fasten him. It will be entered into his buttocks and pulled out of his mouth. What do you think about this? Each no, ring, think, each yeah. ring of this ring have more Aaron than the whole world. How big is the anus of a human being? How they can get in? And what kind of God he is doing this? Putting chain in the anus of a human being. This is sexual punishment. This is sexual torture. What is that? Why? Why? And why the anus? I mean, what is that? Yeah, those punishments are horrifying. I tell this is you. not a horrifying. This is a joke because this is a first impossible. Because it says that every ring of this chain have more iron than the whole world. So every every ring of the chain is like maybe billions and trillions of tons of iron. How you can get that inside an ass of a person? <laughs> it's stupid. This is not a horrifying. I don't know. It's not that they're in hell big like in heaven. What big in heaven? Do you know how much iron we have in this earth? I don't know. Okay, so this is 70 cubit long, but each ring of it have more iron than all the iron in the earth. So how big it is? And all of this will go inside the anus of a human being. That is impossible. That's stupid. And there he says, and this, this, uh, 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 after he insert it, he will take it off from his nose. And then he says, if a drop of lead like this, they are describing for you this uh, uh, chain. And he yeah. pointed to the sickle bone. We are sent from the heaven to the earth and in its distance is a 500 years travel. Look how big it is. <laughs> this, is the, this is one ring. This is not the whole thing. It, yeah, it cannot it enter then. Okay, so how you... The, the human being is a small, tiny creature, and then you want to insert all this arrow in his anus? Yeah, that's... Uh, give me I something else. The first, the, 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 until now, the Muslim, they did not succeed to give us anything useful. Until now, we have nothing but fiction and stupidity. And uh, what about, uh, there's something in the Quran that says sperm is coming from out, uh, from out the belly, and... Uh, I've seen that uh, Muslim people will tell them it is from a, a vein mm. and the vein is located near the ribs and if that vein does not work, <laughs> there will be no sperm. sperm like th that's their, that's sperm, their answer about sperm, that. Sperm, they come from the vein. I never heard of a vein can give a sperm. Yeah, so yeah, but that's really what uh, they say about it. Because someone had a question, uh, he, he said, well, I, I saw in the Quran that something about um, Mm. Sperm is made in uh, uh, the chest or something like that, near the ribs, you know. Mm. And she tells them, well, is that true? And then someone uh, some, from an Islamic website told them, from, um, there is a vein. And mm. if that w vein uh, does, doesn't work anymore, there will be not, no sperm. It's That's it? Because of that vein. But this is okay. And, and, and but, that one is located near the ribs. So mm, that's their answer. Ah, yeah, but the Quran is saying it's a gushing fluid coming from the ribs, not a vein. Next, what about I say if my, my brain in this case, based on the no, they're not they're not talking about the vein, but that's what that's their answer. No, the, the to verse, protect it, you know, no, my, uh, my friend, the, the verse saying that it's a gushing fluid coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. 
not that there is a vein and the vein get the order the the sperm first of all women don't have a sperm do women have a sperm no okay so what vein this is about yeah, from the from the man from the man no from this the verse talking about the man and the women read this is Ibn Kathir I will give you the link too, so you can read it later this is Ibn Kathir saying clearly that this is about a sexual fluid coming from the man and the women the sexual fluid of the man is coming from the backbone he created you from water gushing forth meaning the sexual fluid and by the way this is what he meant when he says we created everything from water we start with the sperm uh, the sexual fluid that's come from breast forth it is not a vein it's not a nerve it's a sexual fluid coming from where from the men and the women okay and the child will not produce except by both of them continue proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women but vain women don't have a sperm it's lying about that I, was, I, I really saw that they are trying to cover a big fat error in the Quran what do you expect women have no sperm and men's sperm does not come from the backbone so it's come it's a gaseous fluid sexual fluid and the baby will not be born without them but this is not true because women uh, sexual fluid have nothing to do with the baby born or not uh, you can make a woman you know have a child by taking a sperm of a man without sex and taking yeah, the egg good. even they can do it in the laboratory what sexual fluid so uh, uh, Muhammad he described he think supposed he claim Allah told him that the man have a sexual fluid coming from the backbone and the women have sexual fluid coming from her ribs and why Muhammad he come with that because there is uh, you know like uh, uh, if, uh, if somebody have too much sex he feel like his back is uh, is hurting so Muhammad he come to the conclusion it must be the backbone <laughs> serious <laughs> yeah like why other, otherwise why he feel some pain there you know obviously it must be that the sperm is coming from there so like when he cannot have sex no more okay that's mean okay and then he have a pain in that area so obviously the, the sperm is coming from there anything else until now all of this is stupid do you really believe in this yeah if i really believe in this i wouldn't go so i just right. want to make sure that so you know, did, did you decide to leave talk islam or, with you, someone about this because, did you decide uh, to leave islam or not yet i'm having doubts about it you know but why you don't want to leave Islam? I mean, isn't it obvious this is stupid? I, I'm, I'm doing nothing about it, you know. Why it's you, not that I'm doing something about no, it. It's why, not you that I'm, why you don't leave Islam? I mean, you just agreed that this is stupid. So why you don't say I'm out? Yeah, because I see so many people are still practicing. And I say sometimes, what? well, what if it's true? And, you know, a lot of people. Are, you see, see? I, because nobody, nobody being truthful. And most of those people do not know. The second you show them, they will not believe in this is existence. Most of Muslims, they have no idea what is in there. Yeah, my mother also told me about those infant uh, killing that the Prophet uh, That's false. Said. There's nowhere in the Quran that says don't kill infant. Al-Mawuda have nothing to do with the infant. Because this is, it's uh, about Al-Mawuda. Al-Mawuda, which is the one which is buried. This is, the, this is the dead body in the judgment day. Allah will ask supposedly the dead buried, for what reason you killed? For what a crime? That's all have nothing to do with burying infant because if the Arab were burying infant then we would not have women <laughs> if we bury yeah, our daughters true. not only that they... Muhammad himself he used to work for Khadija correct yes so women before Islam they used to be the boss it is the it is the Arab who bury their infant today because they put you inside the box they cover you and they say you are our property no, that is true. They say that uh, Muslim women have a lot of rights, but I don't see those rights. rights. She has the right to be beaten. She's like a cow. You know, you, you bring a cow, you feed the cow. Why? Because you want to get the milk. So the Muslims, he feed you to milk you. Not because he, uh, he cares for you. That is true. Yeah. And isn't it the Quran says beat the women? Yeah, but not... Uh... 
you know, not really beating, just okay, uh, a slap or something no, like that. No, right? it's really beating. Here we go. Let me show you the reference. This is a, this is a, they lie to you, my friend. Uh, the, the reason for this story, a man, he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothes. Muhammad, he took the side of the man against the women. Let me show you the story. Here we go. It's about a guy. His name is Rifa. He divorced his wife. Muhammad, he, uh, he forced the Muslim. If a man, he divorced his wife three times, she have to marry a new man so she can get back to her husband. This woman, obviously, she marry a new husband just to get rid back to the first husband because Quran have a stupid rule. So now, yeah, why is that? Why is that? If you divorce your man, you have to marry someone else so you can go because, back to him, right? This, this is disgusting because uh, if the woman now is the one who will suffer and sleep with the new <laughs> man, all right? But this is not her fault. She is not the one who divorced. <laughs> yeah, so he is punishing the women to sleep with a new man so she can go back to her husband. And here you see. That the man he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothes did muhammad take the side of the man or the woman he took the side of the man and this is the hate i will post it in the text for everybody can save it and see it so the prophet of allah he did not even ask the man why you beat her hard muhammad he says don't beat them until you break their bones yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, but this is this is mean. Okay, it's okay to beat them until until not to beat their bones. And as you see here, her skin became greener than her clothes. Secondly, let us say somebody that beat you so light by spitting at you. How look look how light it is. Spit, spit. Do you accept such an insult? No. Okay. So what light do you mean? The second you say beat them. That's mean you are not equal and you are not even equal to animals. In America, if you beat a, if you beat a dog, you go to jail. If you beat a dog, you go to yeah. jail. You call the police, they will come and they will arrest you. And you will stay at least for six months in jail for beating a dog. So what does it mean, beat them light, lightly? They lie. There's nowhere in the Quran that says lightly. Secondly, even if it is lightly, who gave you permission to beat a human being? She is an adult, even if she's a child. She is your wife. Why you want to beat her? Because the Quran says why? Because he wants to force you to obey him, correct? Sure. Okay, so the beating cannot be lightly because the point of this beating is to make her obedience. And what about uh, Saudi Arabia when you don't want to be a Muslim there anymore? They kill you. Are, they, are they going to kill you, like, seriously? Yeah. Oh yeah, any any Islamic countries actually the the punishment for apostasy is death. But do, do you have to get witnesses or something like that, or just if they hear that you? Well, yeah, no. If you don't pray no more, it depends depends in the country. Like if you say it in public, they can be executed right away. And if you don't go to pray, the police in Saudi Arabia they will send the police to question why you don't go to the mosque no more. So if you don't have an excuse like I'm sick, etc., they will question you. And if they have a proof that you are left Islam they will kill you and if you leave Islam by the way they give you three days to repent if you repent within three days they will not execute you right away immediately they will put you in a room jail you and they will give you three days to repent if you don't repent in three days they will kill you right away yeah. um, what, what do, do why do they say what well, in Islam the, you have a freedom for religion what about that, that? I don't that's understand not, that that's not, not you true. Have, that's not true. The verse they are oh. talking about, the verse they are talking about in the Quran, first of all, Muhammad was speaking about saying to the Jews, you cannot force your children not to accept Islam, not the opposite. Otherwise, Muhammad, he says, the one who changes religion, kill him. Yeah, but this sounds stupid. There's freedom in religion, but if you're not a Muslim, no, you're going no to hell. No, there's no freedom. <laughs> they, they are lying. There's no freedom. That's not true. You know? Muhammad, Why is it in the Quran? There, it's not in the Quran. Uh, it's not in the Quran. The Quran says that La ikraha fi din. La ikraha fi din. This is was about the children of the Jews. They were teaching their children not to not to accept Muhammad, not to believe in Muhammad. So Muhammad was saying to them, "There is no. Uh, you cannot force them not to convert." So it was in the opposite direction, not for Muslims. So, like, which saying, like, let us say I have a son, and I say to him don't accept islam muhammad is saying you cannot force him not to accept islam not the opposite you get the point you get the point 
Yes, I get it. Yeah. So the Muslim, they take it because they, uh, they, they knew that you do not know much. So we come for you. So, because read with me carefully. This is the verse the Muslims, they keep quoting for us. This is chapter 2, verse number 256. But the Quran says, fight those who don't believe in Allah. And the last day. But that's for now? Or was for it now, the, yes, for the now. Of the chapter of at tawbah is the last chapter, supposedly one of the last chapters. Some they say even it's the last one ever was given to Muhammad. So the chapter of tawbah, this is when Muhammad, he became victorious. He killed all the Jews. He... Uh, he took over the Arabian Peninsula. He decided to, uh, uh, and he, he, he kicked out the Christians too. He decided to fight the Christians and kill them all. Otherwise, they had to convert. So this is the Tawbah. Here, this one is not about, you cannot force somebody into religion because Muhammad, all his religion about forcing people into religion. Isn't it Muhammad, he said, I've been ordered to fight all mankind until they say there's no God but Allah and there's no prophet but me. So how, how he says, I've been ordered to fight and command to kill them all hmm? and then he says there's no uh, no conclusion religion that can't be true here we go all those verses look all those says Muhammad says I've been ordered I've been commanded to kill all mankind except for sure the Muslims except they say there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and if they say that and they pay the zakat and they do the, pay the money for me then their blood and their property is secure from me so how there is no nobody can force anyone into a religion and muhammad saying i've been ordered to kill all mankind unless they do this and this okay and uh, there's also a hadith about uh, muhammad was uh, was uh, with a cat and he does not want to disturb the cat so he cut off his uh, clothing mm, that's nice okay so Muhammad is very nice with the cat what about killing dogs yeah this it doesn't make sense so so they only they only tell good things about him because that's that's only yeah that's hmm. you can only hear good things I, I never knew that he was just killing and that's, of course they will never tell us hmm. you only hear the good things Allah messenger said <laughs> kill the following dogs uh, you know and all those animals all of them they are because they are share one thing they are like dogs and black animals you have to kill them why yeah because they say they're um, not pure not uh... okay but we use was nice with the with the cat why he's nice with the cat but he want to kill yeah the because the cat cleans himself and uh, allah loves the one who cleans himself like something like that i but guess first of all because all, all animals they clean themselves actually cats mouth is more dirty than the dog you can go right now and search you will find that the bite of a cat can be a lot more dangerous than a bite of a dog because cat have more contagious viruses inside her mouth from dogs and, uh, her... and, but, and what about the, the yeah sorry i don't know i don't speak english very well but the spit the how do you say that the spit of the dog the water in his mouth that's also uh you have to wash your clothing like seven times seven or something time, like that i don't remember that yeah but, uh, because he, he muhammad obviously he ate dogs and i i believe <clears throat> he ate dogs for a reason Dogs, they can sense evil. They can sense bad energy. Yeah. So obviously, Muhammad, when he sees dogs, dogs go crazy because they sense the evil of him. So he hated them. Cats, they don't. Cats, they don't care. You know? <clears throat> dogs are different. A dog, he can sense a human being from... If, if, you, if you own a dog, I saw a study, scientific study, that a person who is... Uh, the owner of the dog he is 500 meter away in the bus station he just came in home the dog he started getting excited because he feel it imagine you know? so a dog a very loyal animal for a human being was the best friend for us not a cat but yet muhammad he want to kill dogs and he hated dogs and what kind of god he want to kill dogs i mean why they are very, I mean, a dog is a stupid animal. I mean, all those... Uh, but, but why they say you cannot kill ants? 
and why 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 dogs okay and ants not? Uh, no, uh, he did not say really. Uh, he, he said he wanna, he wanted to kill ants by burning them. Then he remembered that he should not burn, except by uh, Allah. Allah is the only one who burned, but he did not say don't kill ants. You know, he was he was actually going to burn the ants. Yeah, because my grandmother you know, always told listen, us listen. That okay, to not uh, us, kill the ants. Okay, let us say that uh, uh, Muhammad he liked cats. What about killing a woman and he cut her to pieces when she's alive? He's nice with the cat, but he want to kill a human. Yeah, that's a woman. True. Her name is Umakorfa. You can search. You know, you don't speak Arabic, so I cannot find you. Maybe you can find a new language. Uh, Umakorfa. She is over the age of eighty. Muhammad he tied her legs by two camels, and he ordered the camels to rip her to pieces when she's alive. So Muhammad is nice with the cats, but he rip a woman two parts when she's alive and she is over the age of eighty. But why, why was she? Why, why did he do that? What the reason? She made poetry. She rejected him. She is against him. But this is not an excuse. Even if, if, even if you want to kill her, why you want to kill her in such a way? You tie her legs and you split her to pieces when she's alive. Jesus, that's. Uh... Yeah, you said just say you said you just uh, said Jesus. So why you don't accept Jesus? I just heard you saying Jesus. You are copying the wisdom. What they say? What about you say Jesus? Accept Jesus, my friend. This is cult. This is a stupid cult. There's no way this is godly thing. God, He created all those animals created for our benefit. And but uh, well, uh, just another question. But uh, what does Christ think about Muslims? Are they going to hell or anyone who don't accept Christ, including the Jews, they will go to hell. Okay. The Jews and... who, who came after Jesus, if they don't accept Jesus, they will go to hell. No exception. And Christians too, who are a Christian by name, they will go to hell too. Okay, and the hell is uh, described there or just... Uh, There's not... many verses in the Bible about hell, but you know, don't worry about hell, worry about your, you following the true... Uh, you see, don't believe in God because you're afraid of from hell. I don't believe yeah. in Jesus because I'm afraid of a punishment. I believe in him because he is the right to follow, not because somebody want to punish me. Because if your motivation is because you are scared of punishment, maybe that is a lie. Just as trying that, to scare you. about Islam enjoy. because there's you know a lot of punishment, so that makes people just scared. You know. Yeah. Well, Muhammad he, wanted, the, Muhammad, he used terror in every mean, every way. The, you know, the man he had to terrify the women, the, the wife, the daughter, the, 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 the prophet terrify the man, and Allah terrify everybody. So it's a chain of, ter uh, a chain of terror. Shaitan, he play with the anus of the Muslim, he sleep in his nose, he piss in his ears. It's a terror, you know, he tried to scare you because if you don't without me, Shaitan would do those things to you, just to scare the hell of you. So what do you yeah. think, uh, lady? And what about this uh, Dajjal, the Antichrist? Well, the Dajjal is not really an Antichrist. The Dajjal is the false Messiah. And this yes. is the proof that the Messiah is the true one to follow. Because why Shaitan, he chose to be a false Messiah, not false Muhammad. Hmm? Yeah, why is that? I don't know. Yeah, because he is trying to please God. Shaitan, he want to be God on earth. He don't want to be just a... Uh, Satan. So, Shaitan he chose, according to Muhammad, supposedly. But that false messiah uh, pretends to be God. Yeah, right. True. This is why, if 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 uh, if he is a pretending to be God, so why he chose to be the messiah? What about choosing to be God? <laughs> you know. Yeah. That because make simply, sense, right? because simply, the messiah is God. As simple as that. Actually, Muhammad, he said, that. Uh, 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 the Messiah, the real Messiah, or Allah, supposedly, not one eye. Correct? Yes. Okay. Why Muhammad, he says that you should know that your Lord is not one eyed. Why he, he think that Allah look like the Messiah? Why does he think that? Well, let me show you. I don't know if you, you said you can't see the, uh, the screen, but I will give you the link so you can read it later. I yeah, I think I've, I've seen that before on your videos about uh, yeah. 
Muhammad he described how the false messiah looked like. And then what he say, look carefully, you can open the link there. The Prophet said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal. But I am afraid that you may not understand that the Dajjal is a short hinted, woolly haired, one eyed in eye sightless, and neither protruding nor deep seated. If you are confused about him, know that your God is not one eyed. So that means he has everything, but he has more than one eye. That means Allah is a short man. Yeah. He look exactly like the false Messiah, except the one eye. So but, has, but does Muhammad claim that he's seen God? It doesn't matter. Obviously, he claimed here that this is how it is. No, Muhammad, he did not say he saw Allah. But actually, there's a hadith that says he saw... Uh, uh, Allah he created uh, or Allah himself simply he created from the pee of the horse pee of the horse yeah we can talk about it later yeah of Allah course. himself is created from the piss of the horse and that's in a hadith yeah this is a hadith how did how did Jesus. They keep saying Jesus. Why you don't accept Christianity? I I I always say Jesus. Just always. I have no nothing. Uh, I always say that. I don't know why, but. <laughs> okay, I think. Yeah. But why does it still? Because maybe I've always believed this. I mean, I'm 26 now, hmm. and. It's like, I don't know if a lot of Muslims also do ha uh, have this. Something just inside of you just is, yeah, you just, you're not sure. You're still afraid that something will happen. I can't explain. I, I don't know if uh, someone else had this before, but uh, you just need more time. Because I've seen that it takes a lot, a lot of time to just, you know, to, to leave but Islam. But I mean, one thing is enough to leave Islam. All of the, all those things we showed you is a stupid. Quran is full of errors and mistakes. As long as you are watching my videos, I mean, how many videos you saw of mine? Oh, uh, I think uh, almost all of the videos. So until now, you are not convinced that Islam is false? Yes, of course. But something just tells me that maybe because I've always believed, you know, it's hard. So uh, what hard? I mean, it's hard to be smart or hard to be stupid. <laughs> See? No, no. If, if it's Islam not bad, is a stupid, but... if Islam is a stupid, and you are saying it's hard to leave, to leave being stupid, that's not right. Yeah, so because you... you've always believed something for a lot of years, you know. No, and no, when you so, read, so what? True, so, you... so what? You, as long you get a confirmation that what you believe in was wrong, so you should not stay in the wrong. Yes, that's true. So, why you don't say I am out of Islam? I'm I'm not doing anything about it anyway. So. Yeah, but why you don't say? Right I'm now? I'm just Muslim by name. Why are you are afraid to say I am out of Islam? I don't know. There's something inside of me. Just okay. I don't know what it is. All right, my friend. I'm gonna. I'm not going to force you. you know, no, to... it's not. It's not forcing. I mean, I'm. I'm calling you. I'm asking questions. It's not that I'm. A good Muslim or something like that. I, I'm seriously not doing friend, anything about a, it. You are a good Muslim. Let me tell you why. A, a bad Muslim for me is the one who believe in killing people, uh, raping, kidnapping, etc. But he is a bad for me. But according to Muhammad, this is a good Muslim. So you are not killing anyone. You are not harming anyone. So for me, you are a good Muslim. But in fact, according to Muhammad, you are a bad Muslim. The bad Christian is who? Somebody, his name is a Christian, but he is not really Christian. The bad Muslim is who? The one whose name is a Muslim, but he don't practice Islam. Same. So the one who practice Christianity, he followed the step of Jesus. He forgave, he loved, etc. The one who followed Muhammad, he practiced the steps of Muhammad. He killed, he kidnapped, he raped. So you are not doing any of those. So according to Muhammad, you are a bad Muslim. Yeah. That's true. Okay, so why you don't say I am out of this gar garbage? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, 
I'm out of this silly garbage. Wonderful. Here we go. Uh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for you. Yeah, you need to be brave. I mean, you're holding yourself. You're holding yourself. And inside you, I can tell, you're convinced that this is a garbage religion. So what are you waiting for? So you are a Moroccan. You decide, you know, you are just following the tradition because, okay, I grew up in a society and I believe in this for a long time. But you can tell already that this is false. So yes, it's a garbage. I'm out of it. I'm happy for you. I'm not well, going to ask you. hard with families and, you know, we, so what? you don't I mean, know I'm that not, struggle. I'm not going to stop, uh, keep following something stupid just because my family, they follow some the same stupid thing. That will make us, all of us, stupid. I want to be smart. You know, if the whole world follows something stupid, am I going to follow the stupid world? No, I will not. Who cares about how many, who, you know? People, they can do whatever they want. There's many people, they smoke. Am I going to smoke too? I'm not going well, to smoke because right. I know it's, it's, it's harmful. So there's people take drugs. But people, they do things. So if people do things, does not mean it is right. The world is full of crazy, stupid people. So we will not do stupid things just because somebody is doing it. We have to use our brain and we have to think carefully. Otherwise, we will be victims of stupidity. That is true. You know, since I was a kid, I never smoked a cigarette. My friends, you know, teenage, they say, take a cigarette, try it, try it. I say, no, just try it, man, be a man. Even to try to, to like make you insult you, like if you, because in their mind, like if you don't smoke, you are not a man yet. Hmm? I said, I am a man without smoking. This is stupid. Even when I was a kid, they could not fool, fool me. So we have to use our brain for what is right and what's wrong. Otherwise, there's many stupid things around us in this earth. True. And I have, I have another question. Maybe it's not. It's about people who've almost died and they see like a tunnel of light. Is that, is, so, is, a, is that something in Christianity also or not? I or are these people speak, just lying? You see, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I can't tell you really how true for this because I have to go there and tell you. Then anything else? Yes, it's course, just somebody yeah. told. So I don't go by those things. It can be true, it can be false. I don't, you know, this is, but I'm not believing in God because somebody he saw whatever. What if somebody, he was almost going to die and he saw an underwear? And what, what did, yeah, it's what, called belief. No, that's this is, true. No, this is, this is not, you know, this is not the reason to believe in anything. This is not the reason to believe. Don't go by those things. People, they fabricate, people, they lie, and some people, they might be truthful. But I'm not going to believe in God or not to believe because somebody saw something. Yeah, but they send a message for us, right? No, no, no. You see, this is not really necessarily to be true. It might be an illusion. It might be delusion. It might be, it might be the guy is uh, suffering from pain. It might be true. So we cannot, we cannot judge something we, cannot, we did not see, we did not examine ourselves. So people, they can say for us, like, okay, yesterday I saw somebody coming to me and uh, he was holding iPad and he told me I am Muhammad. I saw uh, uh, somebody in the internet, he's saying he saw the prophet yesterday and he is holding iPad. Okay, I said to myself, well, at least the prophet, he is buying American product, you know, he did not buy something Chinese. So that's a good sign. But I mean, it's silly and the Muslim believe in that. So. People they see and people they can say, but we don't believe in God because those stuff. If you if you base your belief in somebody say something, that's a very weak belief. What if he's a liar? So you should base your belief in your experience. This is why in Christianity, Christ he offer you a personal experience with him, personal relationship with him. Not he say she say. It is you and him. So yeah, but I how can really... I talk then? How can I? There are a lot of Muslims. They see Jesus in their dreams. I, I'm trying to do that also. I'm not but... saying it's not. I'm not saying this is false. At okay, the same time, yeah. you can't say it's true because, as I said, this is personal experience. So you should find your own personal experience. The Lord, He says, knock at my door and I will open for you. So yeah, but how do you knock? Do you just do you, do you just talk, or you, you, how do you, you do that? Read the Bible. I advise you to read the Bible. All right. Create in a spiritual way, not just like if you're reading a story. Try to, to live the story. And this, this is what I do, actually. Uh, when I want to understand something, 
uh, read it or you can play an audio for the Bible and close your eyes and imagine yourself there like the Messiah is talking imagine the story imagine what happened imagine uh, 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 like uh, the background like you know when you watch a movie what the movie is the movie there's people wearing clothes people saying things people moving there's a there's even music background correct yeah so you can you can change what is in text into a real movie in front of you by god he gave you a gift which is called imaginary so you can imagine what it was happening at that time to be happy in front of you try to live the story try to live the wisdom and try to open your heart when you read it not just to read a plain text so do that and let us see if the lord he will invite you i believe that the lord he will give you an invite and right now i am inviting you actually to accept the messiah but this is as i said this is a personal uh, invitation it's not sent from me it's sent through the lord using me to tell you that he loves you and he wants you to believe in him so you can be saved now she want to be saved you want to be saved and not only that, but that because you see when you gain when you gain the love of the lord you will not be left alone you see all the fight i have i have millions of people want to kill me threaten me i never felt worry i don't care i don't even really like somebody they say to me why you don't show your face uh, because this is make me comfortable i can go right now anywhere vacation and nobody knows why this is the whole point otherwise i don't care I am not worried about anything, the Lord, the Lord, when it's time I will go, when it's time I will stay, and I'm not worried about my future. What I'm worried about is not to be decent and not to be what I am, you know, the purpose I exist for. To be just a person who eat and drink and sleep, you know. There's many people, they come to this earth, nobody will remember them, not even their families. And the most important for me to be remembered by my Lord not by the man and this is what I'm saying to you if you want to be remembered by him because time will come and Jesus said that from their fruits you shall know them not from their names so the Messiah he will know you from your fruits your name is Fatima Khadija doesn't matter for him you have a Muslim name doesn't matter he will judge you by your fruits and your fruits start with your belief to believe in the Messiah and to accept him. That's true. And if you feel anything in your heart that the Messiah is really close to your heart, then accept the Messiah, accept him as your savior because you see that the, 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 the difference between Islam and uh, Christianity, the Messiah, he always, he is with us. He said, every two of you mention my name, I will be between them. I will be the third. So right now the Messiah is with us. Not only, listen, he is with us. So it's a personal relationship. It's not a time you wake up in the morning to pray. Our God is not a government department. He opened from five, from nine to, to five. That is stupid. God is always with us and God is always listening and he knew what you want even before you say it so you you know when you receive the messiah you receive the holy spirit you receive the guidance of god you receive his uh, uh, comfort and this is the most important look at the muslims go on islamic countries angry the violence the conspiracy everybody think everybody want to kill everybody the second you became a christian you feel so comfortable you are not concerning you are not angry I can be angry from normal stuff, but I'm not angry to hate and kill. You see a person who was peaceful all his life. The second he go to the mosque, suddenly he want to do jihad. Even his parents are not allowed to take them. Chapter 9, verse number 23. It says, take not your father and your brothers as friends. So with the Christ, you are a new person. You are a new creation. Without Christ, you are just a creature who can follow anything. That's true, but I also hear uh, Muslims like yeah, like family, yeah. The Bible has been changed, and nobody goes to church anymore, and the mosques are just filling. You know, they're just all saying that. Well, first of all, if you go to the church, I live in America. Uh, if you have a house close to the church, your price, the house price is low, because the churches, they are over flooded. 
to the point they are making uh, service in the in the stadium because churches don't fit no more so what they are talking about secondly maybe in some places in europe this is why it's doomed those countries that we don't have uh, where in holland where they have a prostitution in the in the in the display this is not a christian country this is doomed this is why it's doomed so christianity is something and what people do is something else secondly well, uh, muslim they say our mosque is full where 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 the mosque are full if, if the muslims are uh, the mosque are full then we should not have people like you are not in the mosque we should not we should have mosque always full but the fact muslims they go only to show off as an example in the middle east number one reason for people to go to the mosque you will see the mosque door is so busy have you ever been in, in morocco yes okay number one reason for to go to the mosque it was to go to pee not to pray it is the only bathroom open for public there's a mosque in every corner so people want to pee they go to the mosque but nobody's going to pray you, you look at the inside you see everybody going to the bathroom yeah and they also steal shoes there so and yeah forget about stealing shoes this is a business but uh, 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 number one reason to go to the mosque is a bathroom there's no public bathroom you know I, like when i was a, i was a kid in the middle east this, this, what is this building why people keep i mean in coming out coming in coming out coming in coming out i mean it's very busy so i went in to see what's happening and i followed them and then i, I ended the bathroom the mosque is empty there's nobody in the mosque everybody is going to the bathroom but aren't just they going to do the washing or no just they're, 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 they're do, do, do this you know there's some they want to go and pray yes but the majority of people in the you know especially in busy area it's to go to the bathroom so and since when you know if people go to pray that's mean they are uh, religious most of muslims they do that because they have to otherwise they will be the neighbor will look at them he did not go to pray oh he did not open his store to pray he's a pagan Allahu Akbar, he is an atheist, you know. So they do it based on fear. Even the Quran says, uh, Muhammad, he told, them, told the Arab, don't say, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. Don't say what? Don't say we believe, say we are Muslim, we surrender. So why why Muhammad saying don't say that? Because simply, you do not need to be a believer to be a Muslim. True. This is the Quran, chapter forty nine, verse number fourteen. The Arab they say we believe. Allah say to them supposedly the one is talking to Allah. You do not believe, but say we are Muslims, not submit. This is false translation. Okay, so what kind of God he says, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. Yeah, but doesn't God say somewhere else, if you don't believe in me, then uh, yeah, if you don't you're say going shahada, to hell? Yeah, say shahada, here we go. Here he's saying, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. So all what he wants from you to say, I believe, but not necessarily to believe. You see, here he says to them, don't say we believe, say we are Muslims. Those who speak Arabic, they knew what I'm talking about. There is no way Jesus, he will accept somebody by saying to him, don't say, don't say, don't, don't say I believe, say I'm Christian. That would be stupid. Jesus says the opposite. And even the verse says, for faith never enter your heart. Faith never enter your heart. So how, how you are saying to them, say, I'm a Muslim. How somebody faith never enter his heart. And you say to him, say, I'm a Muslim. That's madness. But because Islam is religion based on hypocrisy, it's not important to be a believer. What is important to say, I'm a Muslim. Faith, faith never enter your heart. True. And who is the one talking here? This is Allah Himself saying to the Muslims, "Don't say we believe. Say, say, we surrender to Islam." So they surrender. This is what happened. He forced them by sword. They surrender. 
أسلمنا قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا The Arab they say we believe say which means Muhammad tell them don't say we believe say we became Muslims for Islam never faith never enter our faith so how they became Muslims and Islam they never enter their faith their heart <laughs> and how you say to them say we are Muslims and yet they have no faith in their heart yeah, that's uh, ridiculous. That's, so, uh, all the story is, he want them to convert to Islam, say Shahada, you believe or not, who care, just say, I am, a, I, am, I am a Muslim, and that's it. He knew that nobody believed in him. He forced them by the sword, they surrender. That is true, that is true. So, what do you think? Do you think uh, the Messiah is the way to follow? Yeah, I think uh, the God of the Christians is much nicer than Allah, right? It's not about nicer, God. it's about, you know, uh, it's not yeah, about nicer. Yeah, you know what, it's, um, you feel more loved, loved. Hmm. Uh, you don't have to be scared. And like the Messiah in, in himself, love. he loves you, his message is about love, about forgiveness. God talks more about punishment, they have to obey and punishment and obey punishment. Islam is based on terrorism, about forcing you to do things. They talk more about punishment. Christianity, Christ is about, love me, for I love you. You see, even now you don't believe in him yet, right? Still he loves you. And that's why yeah. he wants you to be saved. And that's why, you know, I would be happy really to hear from you that today that you want to accept the Messiah as a savior. Yeah, I want to be loved and I want to be saved. So I accept the Messiah. And he will, you know, he loves you already. But he, now if you, if you accept him, now you belong to him. And the second you belong to him, you are in his house. That's why we Christians, when we ask the Messiah how to pray, he says, say, pray like this, our Father out of heaven. God for us is a Father, not just God. And there's a huge difference. So the Father is our provider, our protector, our loving. You know, your Father, he worked all his life to feed you, to make you grow. That's exactly how God is for us, our Father. So the second you accept the Messiah, you accept it to be a child of God where God is your father. You are not slave. You are not a servant. You are a daughter of God. And daughter of God here does not mean God have sex with our mother. No, no, I understand, yeah. This is very high spiritual value. But so, when they say uh, Jesus is the son of God, they just mean he's from God, not literally the son. No, he right? is, no. When we say Jesus is son of God, Simply, Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. So, God, he came to us in an image of a person of a man. So, he is. So, when we say the Son of God, simply, God, you know, like, we call God Almighty, correct? Yes. And what Almighty mean? Yeah, that he can do everything. He can be, he can, he is what he is. You can, uh, yeah. Otherwise, he's Almighty or not. So, he is... He is what he is. This was when, when Moses asked ask him, what I will tell my people about you, what's your name? You see, in Christianity, God does not have a name, really. He told him, I am who I am. He did not give him a name. That's why the Jews, when they speak about God, they don't give a name to God because he is very high to name him. You know, he is like beyond naming. There's no names can describe him. So God, he came to us as a man. But yet still he is God. And that is Jesus. This is why Jesus, he is a man, yet he can raise people from death. He can forgive sin. He can make the blind see. He can do things nobody can do. So being a man did not change the nature that he is God in the same time. So he has the nature of a man. So we can see him. Otherwise, nobody can see God, for he is so glorious. He humbled himself so you can see him as a person. That is true. So what do you think about accepting the Messiah now? Yes. You accept him? I accept him. Amazing. Hallelujah. 
Thank you. Uh, I, uh, you made me so happy, really. I'm really tired from speaking for long with many people, but today you you made you made my day come to be happy day. So I want to say thank you and may the Lord bless your heart and guide you and stay with you. And I ask all the Christians here. I do not know your, your real name, but I ask to all the Christians who they are listening, please pray to this lady from Morocco, who accepted the Messiah as her personal savior. And trust me, you will never regret what you just did. And you will see your life will change. Totally will change. Yeah, my heart, my heart is beating right now, so. I'm sure, and actually I can tell it from your voice. Uh, but don't be, in, you know, this is a good thing. And even, you know, like, uh, uh, you, will feel, you will feel a change in your life. Right away you will feel it. You will see that you are a new person. Hate will, will, will run away from your heart. Anger will run away from your heart. You are a new person. Even the Bible says that we have to be reborn again with Jesus in order to be the children of God. So today you are reborn again. You are a new person. You are not just a person as before you call me. You are totally a new person. And the Lord will be with you, my friend. And let me say my sister, because now you are my sister in Christ. So I'm really happy for you. And I will be happy anytime you have a questions about uh, Christianity. I will be happy to help you. Uh, I want you to, uh, uh, you have your phone, right? I mean, I don't know if you have a computer. You can download the Bible from the internet. And yeah, I've done it. I have uh, have an app with Bible. All right. Uh, so start, read it. start reading from the book of John. All right. From John? Okay. Book of John. Yes. And read all the, uh, wherever you wish. I mean, uh, and uh, this is something, sometimes I do. I go and I don't decide really what to go. I just put the Bible in front of me and I open it. And whatever it is, that's this is the message of the Lord for me for today. So you can do that for, for, from time to time, but I advise you to start reading from the beginning so you can understand how the Messiah, which is the Word of God, come to us as a man. And he is with us. And he is the only salvation. And you will see an amazing wisdom, not like a stupid talk in the Quran. You know, somebody trying to make some poetry and even the language is bad. Uh, it's wisdom. It's amazing. It's so beautiful, it's a spiritual, and it is speaking to you today, even though we are 2,000 years after Jesus. Every word Jesus said 2,000 years ago, it fit with my life today, which is amazing. And that's why we believe that Christ's words is a living word. Living word is not about preserving the word only in a book. It's about that this word live with us, not only a word say 2000 years doesn't match for today go and read anything jesus said and you will find it match with your life today same time when the muslim they say to you that the bible is corrupt that is additional proof to leave islam because if the muslim they say that the one who sent the injil is allah correct yes okay so how allah he sent the book and he don't want to protect it that yeah it's is. like the muslims will say that it's like this, uh, God sent the Torah, yes, then he made a mistake, then he sent the Bible, ah, then he, he made another mistake, and then he sent the Quran, well, why you wanna follow, last time. Why do you want to follow God who uh, keeps making mistakes? Yeah, that's that's something I just, I think, okay, if God is, you know, good and all-knowing, and the, why, why he makes mistakes like that? Let me show you how stupid Muhammad. Chapter yeah, that's what they say. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah I know, I know. But I, I will it. give you an example of, about stupidity. One of the things I hate is stupidity. Chapter 3, verse number 28, 65. Uh, Muhammad is, is debating with the Christian. So imagine now Muhammad calling Christian prince and he want to get him busted. So look what Muhammad he says to Christian prince. Oh, people of the scriptures, Jews and Christians, why you dispute about Ibrahim, which means Abraham, while the Torah and the gospel were not revealed till after him, have you no sense? Which means, are you stupid? Yes. But do you see how stupid this is? Because if the one who came after Ibrahim, he cannot debate about Ibrahim, that's why Muhammad cannot debate about Musa. And Muhammad cannot debate about Jesus because he came at the end. That's true. And yes. here you see that the one who made the Quran cannot be God for he is officially a stupid idiot. How you say to me that how you can debate about Abraham and you came after Abraham as if he is the one who was there before them. This is, will be a valid argument if he was before the Jews, before the Christians. But you came long after all of them. But it took like 20 years for them to make it all 
good. It doesn't just, matter how, you know, I mean, I mean look yeah. how stupid. We assume that this is supposed to be Allah is talking, not Muhammad. But look how stupid this statement is. So look, like imagine I go to a restaurant and I say, okay, this meal is for me. They say, no, we are here before you. Huh? And then I say to them, well, the one who come at the end, he cannot ask for the meal. You eat it. You are the one who came at the end. <laughs> yes. You are the last one in the line. So here you see the stupidity of the Quran and the author of the Quran. So how this is, can be from God? Same time when the Muslim, they say that the Bible is corrupt. The Quran says the opposite. The Quran yeah, it's says. always like this. Yeah. The and uh, they, I've read also, they say that Muhammad is in the Bible like... Uh, the name of uh, Ahmed or something like that. I just, well, this, just is, this is again initial proof that Islam is false, because if Muhammad is in the Bible, why Allah don't protect the Bible then? I mean, what the point then? If Allah put Muhammad name in the Bible or a prophecy about him, and how come the Christian did not take those prophecy? As long as they don't like Muhammad, <laughs> as long as they corrupt the book anyway. And look here, the Quran in front of us, chapter two, verse number eighty-nine says. That I can go to your YouTube channel even if I, um, yeah, it can. Yes, I can open it right now. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yes. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you longer. I'm really happy for you, for accepting the Messiah, my friend and my sister. I do not know your name. I do not. I don't want to know your name. Keep it private, please, for yourself, for your safety. But today you are a new person, and I assure you, before I sleep today, I will have a special prayer just for you, from my heart, as a sister in Christ. So the Lord, he might take your in your hand and be with you and open your heart to know him better and better. And I hope that time will come and you yourself, you will be a person, a woman who is a child of God who will bring more Muslims to Christ because it is a blessing for us not only to accept the Messiah, but to bring people to him. That will make him more happy from you. That is your reward, really, that you bring your family, bring your friends, bring your neighbors to know Christ. And that will make something beautiful out of you. You came to this earth not just to eat and sleep, not even just to accept Jesus. I came to this earth so I can serve and I can be a person who can be helpful. So happiness will be in the, in the, in the, in the, in the kingdom of God today for you accepting the Messiah. You are from Morocco and you have a message for all the Moroccan people like you to accept the Messiah and come to him. And actually I noticed that a lot of Moroccan accepting the Messiah. It's amazing how big the number is. So you today is just a new soul from Morocco who follow the Lord. And we will pray all of us for you. Do you want to say anything to the Christians in the chat before you leave? I want to say thank you for all your support and that I finally finally decided what I want to do with this and I think I've made the right decision I mean to that you did trust me you did thank you my thank you my dear sister for calling and thank you very much thank anytime you anytime you want all right take care take care bye bye, bye. we are happy for our sister from Morocco for she accepted Christ you see, like, you know, I get a headache and I get tired really from talking for long, etc. But it's always, it's paid off. And uh, 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 and here we say, uh, like, you know, all the tiring goes when you see someone uh, being saved. The, our, our purpose is, you know, we want just people to know. Yes. Hello? Yes. So, uh, brother, it will be quick, man. It will be quick. Yeah, listen, Can I say something? Each, each time, yes. each time, some someone leaves Islam, you get upset. Are you upset now? No, first of all, I don't think she was a Muslim uh, beforehand because I know where um, she's also from Holland. I heard from her accent when she just jumped in. Yeah, she, she was said, just uh, she... laughing and fakely laughing. She was just ah. mocking Islam from the very start. Hmm. Do you remember the guy two days ago who is from Somalia? You said to him, you are not Somalian, and he spoke to you in Somalian, but you could not answer him? Which I, I proved to him. I, I proved to him that no, he no, was no. He, fake you know, you hang up. You he hang didn't know the five pillars no, of Islam. No, you hang up. You hang up. And this one did know nothing. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Are, you, are you saying your prophet is a liar? Of what? course he wasn't a liar. No, you are, you, you are just saying your prophet is a liar. 
Because your prophet, he liar. said, because your prophet said Muslims will leave Islam. That woman was a liar. She was not a Muslim. You know, was, was like Ismaili guy two days ago. No, he was are, a Muslim also. No, listen, you are, you are being rude. You are being angry now because Islam is being right. exposed and people leave Islam. Each time a Muslim, he leaves Islam, you call me, you say to me, he's not a Muslim. This is what you do. Because they aren't, she was just mocking Islam when she jumped what, in. Okay, what, right what, what she was just Islam? You cannot, okay, can you, can you refute what she said? Can you refute what I said to her? Give me one thing she said. The last one, here we go, the last one in front of her screen. It says, Muhammad, he says, how you dispute about Abraham and you know, you came after Abraham. How stupid that is. How you say that if you are the last one, the one who came after Abraham, he cannot dispute about Abraham. But Muhammad came at the end. Yeah, but I told you, uh, you know, the first time we ever spoke, I told you that we were before Abraham. What? And Allah asked us if we want to be angels or humans. Allah, he asked you if, if you want to be angel or human? Where is that in the Quran? Can you show me? Guys, Allah, he asked the Muslims before Abraham, do you like to be human or angels? You were... <coughs> Abdul, where do you go? <coughs> where do you... <coughs> where do you go? <coughs> <laughs> he's not answering now he's running, he's running, he's running away <laughs> Allah he asked us to be we want to be angels or a human <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> what a comedy show unbelievable I look I look guys a second ago he was shouting and talking and now he's saying I cannot talk now it is 2 a.m. here. Now you remember it's 2 a.m.? A second ago you were shouting, saying she's the Muslim, she is a liar. Shame on you. Coward. I understand. You get upset. And this is what this guy do. Each time a Muslim, he leaves Islam, he calls me, he says he's not a Muslim. <laughs> And you will leave Islam too, just wait. It's just a matter of time. Already actually you are out of Islam, I can't tell. Because each time I show you something, you run away, you bite your tail, you put it between your legs and you run away. And then you say to me, I have to look at it. And then you call in the second day. You never look at anything, you never answer anything. Anyway, go, I gave you a simple thing, it's in the front of us on the screen. What kind of a stupid God is God? Who says the one who come after, he cannot debate the one come before. That's mean you Muslim cannot debate us. That's mean we Christians cannot debate the Jews. And you Muslims cannot debate the Christians and the Jews. How dummy this God is. And yes, the Satan is angry for you saw a Muslim lady, a decent woman, live in this stupid cult who believe that sperm coming from the ribs of the women. And by the way, thinking that people are lying, a very clear sign that you are a liar. Because why somebody from Morocco, I mean, who, there, there's no Christian in Morocco. There's no Christian in Somalia. Those are 100% Muslims. The only Christian there are convert to Christianity. And they are discriminated. In Somalia, you will be killed. Get upset. That's a good sign. Kalavau. Your name is Kalavau. You are a Muslim Kalavau. Mr. Kalavau, you are a Muslim. Yeah, actually, we have enough for today. I guess we will be here tomorrow. I hope so. Uh, don't forget to download the video immediately after we finish. I will leave it there for a few hours only. And after that, look, the Muslims, they give me 22 like, dislike, sorry. 22 dislike. I mean, what you expect?
people they call us as Muslims they leave Islam and this guy this this guy who is very angry he will end leaving Islam you will see you're out of Islam already I can tell and this is why each time you say to me I want to eat I want to sleep it's too late and you have no answer for you are ashamed of the stupid cult and look what he said to us that Allah he asked the human when he created them do you like to be angels or the human how he asked them they don't exist yet you idiot so he asked you before he created you but you are not there Allah was talking to himself in the mirror I mean have you just to show you the low IQ in this cult the second you are a Muslim you don't really use your brain how he asked you if you like to be human or an angel but you are not exist yet so Allah was standing in front of the mirror shaving his beard and saying to himself Shall I create you a human? Maybe not a human. What? What is that, man? I mean, even do you do you use your brain before you talk? And what? You choose to be human? You don't like to be angel? So you can eat hummus? <laughs> hey Allah, please Allah, I want to be human. I don't want to be like I mean how you choose if you don't know even what the difference between a human and an angel, like as if you know. Before he created us, he asked us, uh, let us not let's do it in the correct way. Let us do it with curry. But at the time, Allah he asked us, Would you like to be? And we said to him, some of us like said we like to be angel, and some they say we like to be human. And my grandfather, he liked to be human. And that's why I'm a human today. I mean, who is the one who is taking too much hashish who told you that? This is additional reason to leave this stupid cult. The second you believe in it, your brain is flat. No air, flat tire. Bingo. Unbelievable. All right, guys, <clears throat> it's enough for today. I think we are done for today. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I hope uh, uh, I hope tomorrow I will be able to come in. By the way, still I have really, uh, I have a, a bad, uh, I paused it there, I have a cold. And uh, <clears throat> I'm getting better, but talking too much will not really get me better. <laughs> but I cannot resist. I cannot resist doing what I need to do. And here we go. The Lord is always, uh, uh, you know, give us the reward. You know, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. If every if every day we can bring someone to Christ in 30 days, bring 30 people. That's wonderful. That's beautiful. And then people they watch the videos, and thousands and thousands of Muslims will see how stupid this cult is. This is why it's very important that you download our videos and share them. Because if somebody watched the videos and he left Islam because of a video you posted, it is you who saved him, not me. It's you. Because if not you posting that video, he will not receive the message. So my friend, you will get the blessing of the Lord by saving people. And it doesn't take you really too much work. I'm doing the work. Take the video, just post it somewhere. Very simple, very easy. You can cut it parts. It's too long, you can cut it apart. And that can help somebody, and you never know. This is the beautiful thing about YouTube. You do your part, you go to sleep, still people watching the videos, and more people will be saved. So let us work together. Let us get the blessing. You know, Let us all of us share the blessing together. So the Lord, he will bless us in our life, our family, and in the, our future. God, one day will ask you, my friend, you came to me by yourself, who you brought with you, what you did, how many things you did for me. What you will say, I bought a house, I was busy buying a new car, that's it? Those things are for you, what you did for him. Nothing? So do something to the one who you really you love, prove it. From their fruits, you shall know them. And with the wisdom of the Lord, the Messiah, we end our words and our talking for today. Thank you very much. Christ is Lord. Islam is false, and see you soon again. Bye-bye.